What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking our first look at the Canada trip for 2019. This is the first of three videos I'm going to do leading up to this year's trip. And in this first one, I'm mainly going to recap some of the trips we've taken in the past and who we are as a tribe. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the diversity of our tribe. We have members who have been going up to our special place in Algonquin their whole lives, and we have members who have only been up once or twice, with the rest of us falling somewhere in the middle. With that being said, we all have different experiences of our time in the park, and more specific to this video, varying degrees of backcountry camping experience. Now, some of us have been camping in the park for quite a long time. My dad took his first trip into the interior when he was a kid, and I went on my first canoe trip at the age of 14. The first trip we took in recent years was during the summer of 2016, when Drew, Kyle, Christian, and I made a four-day run from Opiongo to the Portage Store on Canoe Lake. Prior to this trip, we had mostly spent our summers in Algonquin at the cottage on Cache Lake, and we decided that we needed something that would both challenge us mentally and physically while heightening our enthusiasm for the park. Needless to say, we were all relatively inexperienced during this first expedition, but we learned a lot about camping and had a lot of fun exploring new places in the park. That year, the four of us developed a strong capacity for teamwork and realized what the remoteness and solitude of the backcountry has to offer. That same summer, my dad, Josh, and I took a three-night trip up to Big Trout Lake, furthering our skills as backcountry campers. On this trip, we developed better systems for portaging and became more efficient travelers, taking less of our personal belongings with us into the interior and covering more distance during the day. The three of us became proficient in a three-man canoe and were able to travel a remarkable 18 miles from Big Trout back to Obiango in a single day. In the summer of 2017, several members of the tribe took an overnight trip to one of the most scenic landscapes in the park, the Barren Canyon. This trip in particular was quite an achievement since there were 10 people in our party, many of us who had never been camping before, on top of having two dogs with us. This trip was personally the most rewarding for me because of the fact that so many members of the tribe had now been introduced to the experience of camping in the Algonquin backcountry and literally saw a new side of the park. After conducting a series of my own solo trips, I was joined by the guys for a whitewater trip on the Petawawa River. This trip was largely experimental since none of us had experience shooting rapids in canoes. We quickly learned the necessity of scouting the rapids and took no chances of having packs in the boat in the event of accidentally dumping the canoe. Double carrying the portages was a lot of work, but we learned how far we could travel in a day, even with spending several hours at the rapids. Most recently, we set out on a five-day loop from Brent in the northernmost region of the park. This is the first year that we all had relatively advanced knowledge of canoeing and camping in Algonquin Park, and the entire trip went very smooth. Most of the days, we only spent a few hours traveling on the water, and we completed the longest portage of the trip, 3,500 meters on the Little Madawaska River, in just 47 minutes. The pace we set for ourselves afforded us lots of time for exploring significant places in the park and hanging out at the campsites in the afternoon. Right now, we are still unsure about the dates for this year, but it's looking like mid to late August. This year's trip will be similar to trips we've taken in the past in many ways, but will also include some things that are new. The access point for this trip will be Lake Obiango, but instead of making our way west, we will be exploring Lake Laviel and Dixon in the northeast. These lakes are known for their seclusion and fall into one of the park's designated wilderness zones that restricts motorboats, logging, and limits recreation to backcountry camping only. This area is also known for its fishing and features an abundance of brook trout, especially earlier in the season. This is the first year that we will be doing any sort of fishing, so it's going to be experimental as we work this new detail into our camping experience. Another thing we're considering is bringing some of our own food on this trip, instead of relying solely on what the outfitter provides us. This would ultimately cut down the cost of the trip, but means that someone would have to come up with a meal plan, and that we would have to stop at a grocery store before the trip. The loop that we are doing will take us three nights, with two half days on either end of the trip. To afford us more time at the campsites, we will take the water taxi from the Opiango store to our first portage on the first day, 
and back to the store from our last portage on our last day. This will eliminate the time that it takes to paddle across Lake Opiango, which can take upwards of four hours in unfavorable conditions. Some of the things that I'm looking forward to seeing on this trip are an old fire tower on Big Crow Lake and a stand of 300-year-old white pines that measure over 120 feet tall. We will also be staying at the favorite campsite of Bill Swift Sr., who is one of the co-founders of Algonquin Outfitters and was well known for his extensive history of camping in the park. The seclusion and remoteness of this trip comes at a price the Dixon Bonfield Portage, which is the longest portage in the park at 5,300 meters. Fortunately, this portage won't be until our last day, so our pack should be significantly lighter. Also, the portage is reported to be mostly flat. I've read up a lot on people's experiences on doing this portage, and I don't believe that it should take us more than an hour and a half. This year, I'm also trying to range at least two full days at the cottage. Ideally, it would be nice to have a full day on either end of the trip, but I realize that not everyone's schedules might align. That being said, I'm completely open to you guys coming and going as you please. Just remember that multi-day vehicle passes in the park usually are in the ballpark of about $100. Alright guys, well that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this first video. Like I said, I plan on making two more once I start to finalize plans for this year's trip, so be on the lookout for those. I want to thank everyone for watching, but more importantly, I want to thank you for being a part of the tribe. And as always, I look forward to us crossing paths.